Hi, I'm John Dowson, and this is Profiles. Today we're going to talk with a jazz musician, Lenny Boyd. Now, uh, Lenny is a bass player who has performed with most of the top international jazz ensembles in the world. And I can recall back in the early, late 50s when Lenny first hit town, and we used to call him the rock. Uh, you couldn't move him. And in 1974, Lenny joined the newly formed jazz program at Humber College with uh, such well-known musicians as, uh, who are some of the people there? Uh, uh, Ron Collier and, uh, actually I think Freddie Stone was there at the time, and uh, uh, Eddie Sawson and Brian Harris. Um, well, yeah, people are legends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he recently retired as head of the jazz department, and we're pleased to have you here on the show, uh, Lenny. And Good to be really, here. And you drove all the way in from Tottenham to all be here. All the way along <laughs> Highway 9. <laughs> <laughs> can, um, can you tell us uh, um, uh, who were some of the uh, who were some of the other well-known uh, uh, musicians that you you played with? Well, I, I've been very fortunate, I guess, in the you know in the course of my career that. Toronto was a very vibrant jazz town at the time, and uh, I guess I played at the Town Tavern. Was, was a rhythm section there. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah on Queen Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, on Queen Street, just uh, you know, east of Young, and we had uh, oh many different people come through there. Carmen McRae came through. I played with Carmen McRae. I played with uh, Pepper Adams, Al Cohn, and Zit Sims used oh, to yeah. come come through. Uh, you know, oh almost uh, annually or more, and I played with them quite a few times. Well, uh, you, you also brought along a CD with Duke Ellington. Yes, I was fortunate to record with uh, Duke in uh, 19, what was it, I think it was 60, 67, I believe that was. I think it was a centennial project. And uh, he came up and played compositions by Ron Collier and Gordon Delamont and Norman Simons. And, uh, all Toronto musicians. A year later, we went uh, to Detroit and did a concert with him at uh, an international day. It was called Hands Across the Border. And we did actually two concerts there in the in the Philharmonic Hall with uh, with Duke. Sort of a reunion of that. Somebody had heard this record and figured it tied in nicely with uh, Canadian American uh, affiliation. You know, just working together. Right. Uh, and, and this has been re-released, -re obviously, on CD, mm. right? Yes, mm -hmm, yes. And can people buy this in the store now? Uh, last store? I heard, uh, I, I think so. It was on BMG. It was the last uh, last version that I It's uh, that Duke Ellington, north of the border, and uh, with Ron Collier Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, I see. These are all Canadian uh, songs. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. written by Canadian. And there's also an interview with the Duke here, too. Mm -hmm, yeah. Ted O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see remember. If, uh, CGRT. CGRT, yeah. And right. he's still there. Yeah, he's still, he? still there, right? Yeah, he's still there every <laughs> afternoon. You can <laughs> catch him. So were you, were you born and raised in Toronto? Or? Well, actually, I moved to Toronto. I was a transplant. I, I, was, <laughs> I was born, in, born uh, in Collingwood. So I grew up, uh, grew up in Collingwood until about the time I was you know, 15, 16. And then uh, I decided to move on to larger pastures. I came down to Toronto, and uh, I was working. Uh, actually, I worked at work for an insurance company just to keep ends together. But in the evening, I was working at a music store that sold uh, sold records, Promenade Music Store on uh, Bloor Street, which isn't there Probably anymore. Probably not there now. Yeah. No, it was around where the oh, I guess it's, it was around Bloor and Bay. And I started to meet all these musicians coming in <coughs> because they had. Probably the best selection of jazz records of any place uh, in the city, and these musicians would come in to uh, listen to them. People like Norma Maddio and uh, Bill Goddard and uh, uh, Howie Branton and uh, Archie Elaine, oh, yeah. and uh, they would come in and want to listen to these records. And I got to know them and found out there were places to play and uh, after-hours clubs, at, like the House of Hamburg. <coughs> oh yeah, and, uh, that, yeah, that was well known. Yeah. yeah. And Melody Mill, which is actually uh, a place where they'd have musicians would live. I, I ended up going there to live for a few years, and uh, they had sessions in the basement uh, every evening, pretty well. And all the people that came through town, I remember Chet Baker and uh, oh, Milt Jackson and uh, Kenny Clark and people like that coming and sitting in there. And you, and you played. 
you would you play the records or just sell the records? It, it was in a store at night, and yeah. during the day you're right. in the uh, working a, a day right. job. Right? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I finally, finally quit and just kept on selling records and just started to uh, started to uh, study. I studied with uh, an Australian bass player, Jack Lander, to start out with, who eventually ended up playing with the Australian Jazz Quartet. And uh, I just started playing uh, first off sessions, and then uh, a few people would hire me for jobs. I think my first big job was uh, a New Year's Eve job with Ellis McClintock's band. Uh, oh, down at the uh, Royal York, probably. Was uh, it? Actually, no. this was at the exhibition. One of oh. the big. Uh, uh, what was it? One of the big, big places in the exhibition. Not the Palais Royal. No, no, no right I, I think it was. In, I think it was in. Yeah, I think it was in one of the the halls. The there, pavilion or something. The pavilion, there, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. And uh, shortly after that, uh, I went on the road for a couple of years with Don Thompson and. Uh, with Bob the, the bass player or the or Don the, the tenor player. Tenor player. <laughs> right. yeah, DT. DT. Yeah. Yeah. When we uh, we traveled through the northern states pretty well uh, for a couple of years and uh, got a lot of experience with that. Now, so was there a, were you raised in a musical family? Was uh, like a, is that how you got interested in music? Well, my mother was uh, all very very musical, and uh, she uh, was a school teacher. And the story goes that with her first pay that she got as a school teacher, she spent it on a piano. <laughs> really? And there was always this piano in the home. So uh, my sister and I both had piano lessons and went through the you know the usual uh, uh, conservatory programs and that and. Um, Eventually, I started to listen to the radio and to listen to some jazz programs and started to hear what uh, piano playing was like in that field. And uh, By the time I came to Toronto, I hadn't, hadn't played piano for a while. I sort of got interested in girls instead <laughs> 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 and uh, drop, dropped it for a bit. And also, I didn't have a piano down here. So when I met, met all these musicians, I decided I heard Norma Maddio and I said, I can't, I can't play like that. I don't have <laughs> that technique. So I said, bass looks easy. You only have to play one note at a time. <laughs> that was my first mistake. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm still still working on that. But I, and I, I also had liked the left hand part of the piano. I'd always felt. You know, oh, I see. The bass. An affinity, yeah. affinity to that. So bass seemed to be a good, good uh, instrument. What did you did you me. buy one? I buy yeah, I, I bought one. Went out and bought a. Even Why before you could learn to play, and then yeah, and, and, and uh, then I started taking lessons. So and you must have been sitting in and watching people, or listening oh, to them, for yeah, so right, you had yeah. some idea. Mm -hmm. And there were people coming through town to the Colonial Tavern, and I could go down there on the Saturday afternoon matinees, and you could catch them. Even you know, you could go there on the Saturday afternoon. You didn't have to drink. You could uh, just go in the upstairs, and uh, they could, you could bring children there. And that. oh yeah, the the, the kind right. of a lounge upstairs. Yeah, there, they had, yeah. and that was their, their matinees to allow people that were underage to get a chance to hear the jazz musicians that were coming through. And uh, there's so you you studied the 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 bay. How did you find that uh, uh, compared to the piano? <laughs> well, one you know. one string at a time. <laughs> well, I found physically, you know, physically it's a lot different. You need a lot. Especially in those days before pickups, you need a lot, a lot of strength in your left hand to hold the strings down because they're usually about that far from the fingerboard if you're going, going to get any sort of a sound. And uh, but uh, you know, I had a good teacher and uh, I just persistence, persistence and patience and uh, practice was three, three P's. Uh, it paid off. You know. So and, and and you went on and studied, but like I I got s somewhat involved with something similar. I started playing guitar. My mother had a piano in the home. Right. Yeah. My sister took the lessons. I played the guitar. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then when she went to high school, she brought it uh, around. She took the bass, brought it home. So I started playing around with the bass. Oh, but, okay. But she brought the thing home. You so you didn't have to buy one. You no, I didn't. <laughs> no. And that I was, was in a, a country band at the time. You know, it was fairly simple, unplugged in those days. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, then later on, when I thought, well, I should maybe I should take some lessons and, and, and pick up on this thing, um, a fellow named Nick Basil, he took me down to the K factory oh, to, great. To, yeah. and showed me how to find the right type of bass, you know, with the post and so he he bought me I think a three quarter at the time, or he showed me the, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's where I started, a little blonde 
a blonde colored one. Oh, you know, yeah. had to have a you know, kind of rock and roll band. You had to have that kind of thing. Yeah, we have slapstick and all that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, we have a blonde K at the at the uh, school. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, at the college, it's one of the school bases, and a lot of the students really like Blondie. That's I, I had that that's for, the Maybe it's my old base, who knows? It could be. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember uh, I took lessons of a fellow, Vic Cremesco. Oh, Vic, I remember And, and he says, your best way to do it, he said, to start out is to play in a, in a, uh, a Scottish country uh, band, you know, a Scottish music band. I said, why? He says, because you hold your finger in one place and just go bing, bing, bing. He said, it'll strengthen your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not too much. Uh, no. Not too you much. You're really strengthening your left hand, that's for sure. <laughs> but in, in, in those days, like those days, it sounds like a long time ago, in the mm -hmm. 50s, in the middle 50s, you then you would be in Toronto, what, in the 53, 54 when you came down here? Yes. And, yeah, actually, I came down, I think, uh, in... Uh, Probably in 1950, yeah. And, and, and I was starting to play by 52. In Toronto 52. at that time, there was quite a jazz uh, scene, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Went right from, I guess, through the perhaps maybe 64, 65. It was Toronto and, and New York mm -hmm. at this, on this side. And then the right. other side used to have the East Coast, West Coast jazz. Right, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, San Francisco uh, uh, on the other side. But a lot of musicians came to Toronto uh, because it was this uh, it seemed to be the place to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very very healthy. And there were some clubs that had uh, you know we call them bars, and it had a uh, a jazz policy where you could actually make a living of being course. a jazz musician. Right. Yeah. Well, since the time I was you know 18, I think I mainly made a living being a jazz musician, uh, either playing or teaching or a combination of both. Because I noticed some of the names here are the people you. were you uh, you uh, played with uh, Oscar Peterson. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a short break, and, uh, and then we're going to come back and talk more about some of your other experiences in, in traveling around the, with the with the jazz people. So don't go away. We'll be right back with uh, Lenny Boy. Did you know the first edition of the Aurora Banner and York County Advertising Journal was published in 1855? Now you know it! All right, welcome back. We're uh, here talking with Lenny Boyd, the uh, international bass player uh, and uh, the head of the bass department at Humber College. Uh, recently retired, but uh, they seconded you again because they uh, the, the, you're working part-time, I guess. Yes, now. I'm sure. <laughs> Haven't quite completely cut the umbilical cord yet. So some of the people who are watching, hopefully, will be so, some either, uh, there was probably some students of yours. Have you, oh. had, have you had people from around this area, Newmarket, uh, Keswick, and so on, uh, in your oh, yes. jazz program? Mm, yes, there's definitely uh, been you know, quite, a few, quite a few over the years who come from around this area. Uh, and have any of them gone on? Some of your students gone on to uh, fame and fortune at all? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what do you consider fame and fortune? <laughs> making a living. Yeah, I guess. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot making a living. Uh, I guess uh, Michael Farquharson, uh, who uh, was one of the earlier, earlier students, he, uh, he's released a couple of CDs on his own, and he's actually te he's teaching down at Berkeley now in Boston. Oh, really? He's on full-time there, teaching there. and. Uh, kept in contact with him and um, oh we've got people people all over the world uh, playing there's people out there like uh, so many it's hard to remember uh. well the the because I, I was I was kind of on that scene in, in Toronto mm -hmm. in the 50s playing with a fellow named Tommy Danton and then later yeah. on uh, Alex Lazaroff you know at the old Edison there and so there was quite a bit happening and for me, it was a, a real treat just to just to be part of it and, and to be down there and to, to meet these guys. But you actually played with Oscar Peterson, Ray Brown. Well, you, you well, studied, studied with Ray? I studied with Ray at Oscar Peterson School, yes. I, oh, yeah, and they used to hit a jazz school, didn't they? had a they? jazz school in the 50s, yeah. And, I, and Phil Nimmons, Ed Thickpin. Mm -hmm. There was uh, the Advanced School of Contemporary Music, they called that. 61 to 62. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you did... Uh, Four models in service teaching, uh, learning strategies. You're a professional musician, worked in clubs. Uh, who are, these are some of the people, Jackie and Roy Jazz Clubs. Where is that? Well, Jackie and Roy were uh, a vocalist, uh, and Roy, Roy Crowell played piano. And they went back to Charlie Ventura's days. Uh, and uh, they used to come to town quite a bit. And uh, a drummer, Bruce Farquhar, and I used to 
work with them, and they liked us so much that they invited us to travel with them. We went to, played clubs in Buffalo, we played Baker's Keyboard Lounge in Detroit with them. We went down, we played Shelly Mann's Club in uh, L.A., the This the was uh, jazz, wasn't it? Yep, was yeah, 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 yeah. Local jazz, and we played in San Francisco and uh, Minneapolis. Did, did a lot of traveling with them. Really? Yeah. And, and you also played uh, with Teddy Wilson in, in uh, the British West Indies, that's mm -hmm. the piano player. Yeah, Teddy, Teddy yeah, Wilson, yeah. the piano player, going back to uh, his Benny, Benny Goodman days. Yeah, because he was yeah. in the, uh, was it uh, Benny Goodman Quartet, I think, wasn't yeah. it, with uh, yeah. uh, uh, Hampton, uh, Lionel Hampton, Hampton, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Gene Cooper, I guess. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I played, with, uh, played with him at the Town Tavern, Archie and Lean, and I played with him at the Town Tavern, and he, he really enjoyed our playing, so he asked us if uh, we would like to go down to uh, Antigua in the British West Indies with him. Uh, I believe it was probably in the February of the next year. It sounded like a very good idea at the time, you know, getting away from Toronto in February. Yeah, why not? Yes. <laughs> and, I, uh, I remember when we were playing in Chicago one time with this, with this other group I was in, the rock and roll band, you know, and we were wandering around. Was Eddie Philp was, this, was our sax player at the time. Mm -hmm. And we, we heard this uh, jazz music with some gig in the afternoon or was a night off, I forget when, and who was it? Teddy Wilson and uh, Barney Ketzel. Oh, playing yeah. away in some little club, <laughs> you know. You amazing. never can tell what will happen in no. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then we ran into uh, the guy that had the horn. Remember, was up at this. Uh, what was his name that had the the horn bent up? Oh, Dizzy Gillespie. Dizzy. Yes. Sir. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was uh, playing in the Loop downtown, and he had that uh, that guitar player who died shortly after with him. It was it. Uh, oh, uh, uh, got his name. Uh, but he he was, uh, and he eventually came to Toronto as well. The dizzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or dizzy. What was it? Time. What was it like? I mean, you were playing in the jazz clubs and so on in Toronto at that time, and there was the Town Tavern, uh, mm -hmm. or what, the Colonial. The Colonial, yep. Uh, and then, and then was, where else was there? Well, the, uh, there was uh, one on Young Street. What, uh, what was it called? Uh, on Young and Dundas. Well, not the oh, Young and Dundas. You mean not not the uh, the Brown Derby? No, it was no. A, uh, no, actually, it was a little bit. And then there was the After Hour Club. There's lots of After Hour Clubs. There was the House of Hamburg. Yeah, the House of Hamburg, Melody Mills, who was uh, the first floor club later on Asquith. And then there was George's Went Spaghetti Park House. Park. You remember down on Dundas? Came, yeah. And uh, there was uh, The Cellar. Oh, yeah. Which is on, on that. Avenue Road, yeah. <laughs> that, that turned into the Blue Note and then something else. I think it's, it's still going now. I think it's still, yeah. By <laughs> but they call it something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, but it's still a music place. Yeah. That's right. And uh, you were talking about uh, people living at the um, the place on Jarvis Street. Melody Mills. Melody yeah. Mills. Mm -hmm. Well, George's used to have upstairs when I first went there. They had rooms. Yes. <laughs> and I, I'm, and uh, 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 well, you probably know Tommy Oki, a drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy, yeah, yeah, right. He and I roomed upstairs oh, you did, at, yeah. at George's Spaghetti House, if you can imagine. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> and, you, and we'd see all these people. You yeah. Know? And I played there a lot. In fact, at one, one point I played there for, I think, about a year and a half straight when uh, I guess it was at the when times changed when string bass was really sort of on the outs because everyone was thought electric bass was the answer to everything and I went into George's one time with Mo and uh, he had brought Art Ayers in to play organ and Art was a good organ player but he didn't play the pedals but I was playing I was playing string bass and wasn't cutting through at all so I got so fed up I phoned a friend of mine, Bob Erlinson, and asked him to oh, yeah. if I could borrow his electric bass. I knew he had an electric bass. I borrowed that. Mo liked it so much that he hired the band to go down and play on the Johnny Carson show with him. And uh, then we came back and he, he set up for I think for the next few years he had, you know, electric bass, he had a, a trio that uh, Art and I and uh, uh, different drummers would, would play uh, the house trio one week, Mo would play the next week, and then the, the third week he'd have different people like Don Thompson and uh, DT and uh, oh, yeah. uh, Rob and different people like that would come in. So I was there for about a year and a half solid. At, at George's? At George's, yeah. Well, he used to be open on the weekends, I think, was it? Friday, no, Saturday? No, he, he, was, uh, he was open at that time. But they had music all week? All week, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. But the weekends were the, that was the big, big night. They'd stay open late, yeah. late on the weekends, and so all the musicians, uh, could come in after the gigs, you know, and catch the last set. I remember because it, it was the only place around at the time that was open late. We used to go right. get a 17-inch pizza. <laughs> yes, right. And, 
You, and just to go to the back door and pick it up and take it. We were staying in a hotel, at a, I forget, the Carlton House, I think it was. Or all the, 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 uh, one, one of the finer. Yeah, one of the finer hotels in town. <laughs> so the music, all the wrestlers used to stay there. They used to walk down the street to the Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah. Pretty heavy guys. Yeah, <laughs> all of that was. But, you know, they'd be lined up at the front, and we'd be getting at the back there, and Dougie would let us in and sneak into the kitchen, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody at the front would be saying, I know George personally. He'd say, oh, yeah. George. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, and uh, so you were there a year and a half. Mm, it's so, all, yeah. Well, besides, other, you know, I frequently played there before and after that, but for one stint I was there a full year and a half. Yeah. And, and you played with some of the other guys, Bud Powell, Charlie Lloyd, Mike, M Miles Davis. And mm -hmm. these, are, these are people, Letty Clark, Terry, Sonny Stitt. Buddy DeFranco, uh, Roy Eldridge, mm -hmm. Zoot yeah, Sin. Jazz, yeah. I don't know if anyone would remember him. Carmen McRae, mm -hmm. June, June Christie. Oh, yeah, I yeah, remember that. Remember her, yeah. John Hendrick, this is from the, uh, the Hendrick, Hendrick Library. Lambert and Ross, yeah. They used to come to the Town Tavern quite a bit, I mm -hmm. remember. Yes, oh, to see them. quite a bit. Yeah. Actually, one, one, time, one time when they came through, the CBC had hired them to do a, a TV show while they were in town. And at that point, the union had a, a law that you couldn't come in from out of town and play a club and do a TV show at the same time. So he had his, uh, the usual guys uh, at, do the TV show with him that he was traveling with and uh, hired Toronto musicians to do the uh, town tavern oh, with him I that see. stint. Yeah. So, he, so he, 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 he could do both because he was a singer, you know, but yeah, the musicians that's right. couldn't. <laughs> well, had he split with the trio by that time? Uh, yes, he was, yeah. on, he was on, on his, his own, own at that yeah. time, yes. Mm -hmm. that was, I, I, I believe after Annie Ross had passed away. Yeah, because I think they started out back in late 40s when they had that union strike, you remember, then there was no musicians right. and they did all the vocal stuff. They did vocal things, right. Yeah, and to back up other people who were mm -hmm. singing at mm -hmm. the time, yeah. I think Nat King Cole sang and they did the backup and sound like musical instruments or something. I think so. They, they could do that. <laughs> I, well. remember, I remember Ron Crawley. He's still around, isn't he? Ron, Ron Crawley is still active. around, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, did, I, did, I did a lot of things with Ron. We'd, we went to Expo 67. He had written, uh, written some works and uh, played there. And also Gord Delamont wrote a, a suite for Expo 67 uh, that I recorded with Ron. Ron conducted that. And that was played all the time in the uh, Ontario Pavilion. And we went and did some concerts as well with Ron's band. Well, you're still playing, though, uh, professionally, aren't you? Oh, I'm yeah. still playing, yeah. Very so, because so, I saw you uh, last year, where I first saw you, I hadn't seen you for years, at uh, uh, some event down here, a fundraising event in uh, Richmond Hill, and you had a guitar player with oh, you. Oh, ne Neville Barnes, yeah. So yeah. That was at the uh, uh, the Red Cross at Sunnybrook Farms. So that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, a fundraising event. Mm -hmm. So what, what are some of the things you're doing now? Uh, uh, oh, I work... Uh, a lot up uh, the place at Hockley Valley. It's a really nice restaurant, the Woodside, and uh, they have uh, piano and bass duos, or guitar and bass duos, oh, do they? in the in on Friday and Saturday. Is that at the at the resort there, the Hockley Valley Resort? It's just a little bit uh, about a half a mile west of that. And when and is right it on every right weekend? Every Friday and Saturday. Yeah. And you're playing there? Uh, yeah, quite quite often. And, uh, I'll have to remember that. So for the viewers who want to catch catch you and some jazz, that's where you can okay. go. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, next Saturday, which is what the tenth. Uh, well, this is taped. We're good. We're, we're oh, okay. So <laughs> you've already played that. Well, okay. I play I play quite a bit down at Rhodes, uh, which is uh, down on uh, Young and St. Clair, which is another restaurant, and they have uh, music uh, uh, the weekends. I mean, and how about the Montreal Bistro? Do you do anything in there? Uh, I haven't like done that? it. Uh, last time I played there, I guess actually was uh, for a memorial concert you did for uh, Norm Simons. Oh, really? They, they took over the room on a, on a Wednesday and on a Monday night. And the Copains are still going, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so you, you're sort of re semi-retired, I guess. Semi-retired, but uh, still, 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 still kicking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, look, we're just going to take a, a short break. We're going to come back and just going to wrap up. Don't go away. Do you have an idea for profiles? Call us at 836-7197. You can write to us at 395 Mulock Drive, Newmarket, Ontario, L3Y8P3. And you can visit our website 
at www.rogerstelevision.com. All right, welcome back. And we're just going to uh, wrap up. We're talking with Lenny uh, Boyd. We could go on forever about some of the, the people that you played with. Uh, uh, the Blue Mountain Suites Orchestra, the Jazz Quartet by, with Paul Hofford, Mo Coughlin, Jerry Fuller, and you, you've, you've been all over. Um, so just for this as a wrap-up, wh where, where can people catch you now uh, at this little club once in a while at the, uh, at in the Hockley Wo Valley? Yeah, at Woodside, and uh, quite often I play down at uh, Rhodes, uh, which is on uh, Young Street just north of St. Clair, and uh, I'll be playing there. I think the next date I know it's going to be after I don't know, June 10th, I think, I just, uh, I'm playing in there. And you're, you're leaving here to go to some, something in I'm, Hamilton today, Yeah, I'm just playing at, playing at the convention center for, I'm not even sure <laughs> what, but it's uh, playing with, you know, you get called from people and you go and play for somebody, for somebody, uh, with somebody. Well, know. there's a group of which, of, of which I'm involved in, started a, uh, a jazz uh, society club here in t town, Newmarket, mm -hmm. right. and uh, they're going to be playing every other Tuesday, every other Sunday afternoon Great, at yeah. uh, the Lava Lounge uh, in, in right here in Newmarket. So if you get a chance some Sunday, you just drop over. I'm sure that there'll be a base that they can, they can sit well, in. Oh, that would be nice. Well, yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. So, okay. I, I mean, we could go on and talk forever, uh, Lenny, but I really appreciate you coming by and uh, lots of luck in your uh, in your future. And you're still still teaching, too, are you? I'm still teaching, yes, right, yeah. <laughs> still that, too. Well, that's our show for this week. I'm John Dowson. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. <laughs>